All right, let's try this again. Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Dana, and I'm an educator here at the Aquarium. And today, you and I get to explore one of my favorite animals. I know we say that every class, but for this one, um, I have some personal experience working with this group of animals and learning a little bit about their nesting habits, um, their population dynamics, and a little bit about their life cycle and how challenging it can be to be a sea turtle. So, during this program, I'm going to be talking a whole bunch about sea turtles. We might even get to draw a sea turtle. Um, I encourage you to grab some pens or pencils or uh, scratch paper or anything that you have around to participate if we draw. And of course, we also want you to participate in the program by texting us and chatting and sharing your observations and your thoughts and your questions. So, we have this number right here, 562 Two eight six one eight three eight. My friend Cynthia is in the studio with me, and she's going to be helping us out by sending in all of your thoughts and comments to me. That way, I can answer them online, um, on on the air, and uh, we will get to as many questions as we can. So the more, the uh, the merrier. Now, if you're watching after our live stream, which is at nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday, the twenty sixth. If you're outside of our normal half hour stream, we do ask that you instead contact us at this email address. It's live at lbaop.org. And make sure you're very clear on what you're asking, especially for referencing a certain part of the video. That way we can understand exactly what animal you're asking us about or maybe what reference that you're referring to. So, with all of those communication outlets out there for you, uh, we really do hope to hear from you. We hope to engage with you and have you, um, you know, ask your questions, share your observations. Here at the aquarium, we'd love to talk about what's interesting you, and we need to know what's interesting you, so go ahead and reach out. So, I mentioned that we're talking about sea turtles, but I want to step off the screen for a moment and give you an opportunity to look at what's going on behind me. No, not these fish, excuse me, but the habitat itself. Now, when you picture a sea turtle, is this usually what you picture? Mm. A lot of people are shaking their heads, saying no. So oftentimes when we think of sea turtles, we're actually picturing them in a much more tropical, warm water habitat. However, this exhibit that we're looking at right here, because remember, this is um, a live camera feed. Well, this is the highlight reel of our live camera feed of a local kelp forest habitat. This exhibit is here at the aquarium, but the exhibit is modeled after Blue Cavern, which is out at Catalina Island. So a local Southern California habitat. Why are we talking about a local Southern California habitat when we're talking about sea turtles? Well, that's a great question, everyone. Believe it or not, we actually have green sea turtles that hang out along our coastline, taking advantage of some of the warmer water that um, hangs out near maybe at the mouth of rivers or... Uh, maybe in front of, you know, industrial areas where there's a lot of uh, heat and energy in the water. So we have a green sea turtle population. Even right here in Long Beach, they hang out in the San Gabriel River. So if you've seen a sea turtle and nobody believed you, you were probably right. We do have green sea turtles right here. Now we do occasionally see some other, green, uh, other sea turtle species, but usually we're just counting on those greens. We have seen a loggerhead turtle off of our coastline. We also get leatherback sea turtles along our coast, more so up in the central coast area, but they have been seen off of Southern California. So who knows, maybe one day we'll get lucky. Now, here's the thing. Sea turtles have a very interesting life cycle, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that. But first, we have to figure out what exactly a sea turtle is. So I want you to put your thinking caps on, and I want you to grab your piece of paper and a pencil. We're going to learn what a sea turtle is. Now, it might take a second for my camera to get up and running. But once we're there, we're going to go ahead and draw a little bit and expand our knowledge on sea turtles. All righty.
all of our controls up and running. There we go. Okay, so I'm using scratch paper. You can see there's a schedule on one side and um, the, I'm using the blank backside. We always recommend using scratch paper during our programs because that way we're not wasting any paper. We're using everything that we've got. So a sea turtle. When you hear the word sea turtle, what comes to mind? Sea turtle. Well, first question is, what makes a turtle a turtle, right? Turtles are reptiles. So that means that they're going to share all the common characteristics that re reptiles have. So turtles are going to have scoots or scales to protect their body. Okay, they're going to uh, lay eggs. That's a really important one. Now, turtles in general, right, are air breathers. Sea turtles are also air breathers. They have lungs just like you and I. And you can think being a sea turtle and having lungs, you're going to have some challenges that a turtle living on land might not have to deal with. So we know so far being a reptile, they have scales and they lay eggs. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing their nice, hard, protective shell. Let's go ahead. Actually, Cynthia, can you throw a photo of a sea turtle up on the screen so we can get some ideas? Aha. So take a look. We've got these scales or scoots, as we like to call them, especially back on their shell back here. We can't tell that this turtle lays eggs, nor can we tell that it's an air breathing animal. Right now, it's swimming underwater. So. Let's go ahead and start by drawing this shell here. Can we get a side view of a turtle shell? Hmm, she's going to look for us. Here we go. So we want to make sure we get this nice strong curve along the back of our turtle. And then we're going to connect it back underneath before adding the head and the uh, flippers, the arms. So if we jump back to our drawing here, you'll see that we're going to add this long curved shell. We're going to connect the bottom edge. Maybe get a little lip right there. And then we're going to add in the head. Heads have different shapes. I'm going to draw a turtle that has a beak. So a lot of our sea turtles munch on grasses and algaes. They have big eyes. And then they have little flippers back here. One, two. And they have long, strong flippers right here. Now these long, strong flippers are going to help move them through the ocean. And of course they have one on either side. This one's going to come back a little bit more. All right. So there's my sea turtle. Pretty simple, right? What are we missing? What is a key component that, we're that we've talked about so far that we want to add to our drawing? That's right. We got to add those scoots or those scales. Let's go ahead. So sea turtles have very unique patterns on the shell. In fact, the style and shape of their pattern can actually tell you what species of sea turtle you're looking at. Now, for our drawing sake, I want you to draw whatever pattern you can think of. Whatever you want. So my turtle is going to have kind of a hexagony pattern here along the side and then it's going to connect up here and then maybe they'll have some more on top so get creative whatever your shell looks like you can also color it in and create different species or make your own sea turtle species but it's important to note that they do in fact have these scales or scoots covering them now, they also have them on their flippers. Now, there's a lot of them, so I'm just going to make it really, really easy for us. And I'm just going to put little half circles to demonstrate the pattern and the scales. All right. So now... We have learned and understood that sea turtles have patterns on their shells. They have this hard protective shell on their back, right? They have these long, strong flippers to move them forward in the water. I think we have a pretty good understanding of what makes a sea turtle a sea turtle. Now, there's a few other things that we should talk about here, 
right? We mentioned the fact that they are air breathers and that they lay eggs. So let's start back at the beginning, the very beginning of a sea turtle's life where they're learning what it means to be born from an egg. Let's go ahead and see if we, um, actually we don't have a photo of the nest, but we'll talk about that and then we'll roll into um, the hatchlings and what happens when they come out of those eggs. So uh, not yet, but can we put up um, just an adult turtle so we can talk about that process? All right, so let's go ahead and see what we've got on the screen. So once again, this is one of our green sea turtles. I can tell it's a green sea turtle because of the pattern right behind its eyes. It's got four scoots right here. One, two, three, four. That's going to tell me it's a green sea turtle. Now, green sea turtles, when they reach adulthood, they're going to, uh, the females are going to come back to the beach to lay their eggs. Now, what that means is these air-breathing turtles who live in the ocean are going to return to a nice sandy beach, the beach that they, in fact, were born on. Now, what they do is they crawl their way up. They use those long flippers that help move them through the ocean to now move them up the beach to find a safe space to lay their nest. Once they get up there, those back flippers that we drew earlier on, they're little, right? But they're going to use those to scoop, 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 and dig a hole in the sand. Now, they're going to create a nice safe space to drop all of their eggs because these eggs can be under a lot of stress and there's a lot of predators out there who might want to feed on them. Can you think of any predators that might eat sea turtle eggs? Hmm. Yeah, birds can sometimes dig at nests. Raccoons like to dig up nests. Dogs like to dig up nests. Pretty much anything that can smell those eggs under the sand is going to do their best to get down there. So it's important that these sea turtle uh, moms lay them in an area where they can really get down under the sand and then afterwards they're even going to camouflage it so it's hard to find. Now, once these uh, turtles dig their hole, they're going to start to drop their eggs. Depending on the species, they can drop anywhere from about 60 to maybe 120 eggs. I know that's a really big range, but there's seven sea turtle species in the world so they all have their different kind of little range of egg laying. Now, they're going to drop anywhere from 60 uh, to 120 eggs, and those eggs are going to fall right on top of each other, right? So imagine having a big bag of ping pong balls. Dump them out on the ground, right? Now, ping pong balls are actually a really great example of the size of a sea turtle egg. And what's interesting is just like you can kind of bend and squish a sea turtle, or I'm sorry, a ping pong ball. Have you ever dented one accidentally? Yeah, it's kind of frustrating when you're trying to play ping pong. But it's incredibly important for sea turtle eggs to be able to bend and dent a little bit. Unlike our chicken eggs that you and I might be used to eating, sea turtle eggs tend to be much softer. So you can actually kind of, uh, they're malleable. And that means when they're dropping on each other, they're not splattering open. They're nice and protected in this nice sandy nest. So now we can picture all of these eggs under the sand. In fact, let me draw you a quick little idea of what that might look like. Just a real quick one. So here's our sea turtle nest. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see what's happening over here. Here's the surface of the sand. Here's the nest that mom just dug. And here's all the eggs on top of each other. Now remember, if we were looking at it from the surface, we probably wouldn't even know it's here. We're looking at it from the side as if we're under the sand. So they're eggs. Where do they go next? Let's go ahead and see. Let's see what Cynthia has on the screen for us. They've been under the sand, developing in their eggs. And now, pop, we get a whole bunch of sea turtle hatchlings. Now, these are leatherback sea turtle hatchlings, one of my personal favorites. Leatherback sea turtles are incredibly endangered. In fact, all seven sea turtle species are on the endangered species. Now, I have the pleasure of working with Eastern Pacific leatherback populations, and we were able to help these leatherbacks and um, protect the babies as they made their way down the beach, protect their nests if they were laid in an unsafe area, um, and get a general idea of what their population might look like. Now, here we go. We're looking at some other little hatchlings here. Right on the top of their face, right here, they have what's called an egg tooth. It's a little point that actually helps them rip through that soft egg that we talked about. So step one, everyone go inside your turtle egg. Ready? Now you gotta get out. What do we do? What do we do? 
that you actually pff, rip your egg open and you're under lots and lots of sand. I apologize. My microphone keeps moving around today. So you're under lots and lots of sand. Then you have to dig your way out. So everybody start digging out. Ready? Ugh. 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 You gotta work really hard. It's exhausting. So we might take a break. A little bit more. Up, up, up. Oh, take a break. Eventually, all these little hatchlings are going to pop out of the sand and make their way down the beach like we just saw in that pr uh, previous video. Now, once they hit the water, actually, let's jump back to our drawing. There we go. Look at them go. Little sea turtle hatchlings are pretty darn cute. Do we have a, a video, actually, of uh, the green sea turtle? The one that, yeah, the one singular. Now, you'll see that those leatherbacks move pretty slow, right? There's a lot of them, and they're moving, and they're struggling down the sand. Wait till you watch this little green sea turtle. Ready? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Green sea turtles tend to be much more um, adventurous when they're hatching out of their egg, and they're really going to uh, make a run for it. Now, let's go ahead and jump back to our drawing for a quick moment. We're going to draw a cute little sea turtle hatchling. Now, we're going to go as if we're looking down on the hatchling, so it's going to be a nice little shell. It's going to have a tiny little head, tiny little flippers. Now this is actually pretty close. Look at it compared to my hand. This is actually pretty close to the size of an olive ridley hatch hatchling, which is one of our smaller sea turtles. And then of course we have to add the pattern on the shell. Ta-da! All right. So we got a little sea turtle here. Oop, we got to put the little tooth. There you go. So now that they're there, their next part of their journey is a hard one. And we don't have much footage of this because all of these little sea turtle hatchlings made their way to the ocean. So this, my friends, is what the next step of our journey is going to look like. Are you ready? I'm going to take blue and I am just going to draw waves everywhere. Because as of right now, in this sea turtle's life, what they're doing is they hit that ocean and they are surviving off the little last bit of energy from the egg yolk, okay? And they are swimming as far as they can and as hard as they can for as long as they can. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to get to a place where there is less predation. So remember, we started talking about predation when we were talking about these little hatchlings in the nest, right? They were still in their eggs. They couldn't even do anything to defend themselves. Raccoons are coming over. Um, birds are coming over. Crabs are coming over. Snakes are coming. All these things are eating these little eggs out of the nest. Now, now they've hatched and they're making their way down the beach. Now for us, we might stand here and just watch them, right? Oh my God, look at the boob, look at the... <laughs> I love little hatchlings, they're amazing. But for a crab or a bird or a dog or a raccoon or anything on that beach, the same predators that might dig up the nest, this is an all-you-can-eat smorgasbord of, you know, buffet food. So what that means is they're already facing a lot of predation. Ooh, check this out. Is this a video or a picture? Ah, perfect. Look at all these predators. Oh, my gosh. Birds, crabs, raccoons, even foxes. All of these individuals can eat a sea turtle hatchling. That is just in the 50 yards it takes for them to get to the ocean. You think once they're at the ocean, they're like, Phew, we're good. However, that's not the case. Just like there's a lot of predators on land, they hit that ocean and there's gonna be a lot of predators in there. Now you might be asking yourself, what eats a baby sea turtle in the ocean? And the answer is anything that can fit a baby sea turtle in its mouth. Now go ahead and put your hand up. Circle your palm right here. That is about the size of a baby sea turtle hatchling. So they're incredibly small animals. So that you can imagine there's a lot of predators. So they're going to go out to that ocean and they're going to swim, 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 swim as long as they can, as hard as they can, as fast as they can. And they're going to remove themselves from that coastal habitat, right? Because when you think about it, there's a lot of fish living right along the coastline. They're living in the shallow areas where there's lots of sunlight to feed um, the plankton, which then feeds the smaller fish, which then feeds the bigger fish. Now, once they get out into open ocean, right? That's a little bit safer. There's still lots of predators, but there's also lots of space. 
Now, the young years of a turtle's life, once they get out to the ocean and they get out of that high pred uh, predator area, not a whole lot is known. We know that they go from this size, right, as a baby leatherback, about the size of your palm, to this size. Now, when I say this size, I don't mean the size of my hands outstretched. I mean that sea turtle is larger than I am. Leatherback sea turtles are the largest sea turtle species in the world. Certain populations can get up over 2,000 pounds and over 7 feet along the shell. Really, really incredible. Now, not all sea turtles are that big. Whoa, look at this. Okay, so I have worked with leatherbacks, and it's phenomenal. I have never seen one in the water. That would just be, I, would, I don't know what I would do. I have seen green sea turtles and hawksbills and loggerheads in the water. I have never seen a leatherback, so maybe one day, right? If you can all just out there think, maybe one day we'll see a leatherback in the ocean, right? Now, here's the thing. Like I said, there's not a whole lot known about that mid-juvenile stage of our sea turtles. What happens when they grow from a hatchling up to an adult? And that's because that whole stage of their life is, in fact, happening out in the open ocean. And for sea turtle biologists, that's really hard. I want you to close your eyes and picture for a second. You are studying sea turtles, right? Now, they're on the beach. They're little babies. There's a nest. Oh, there's a nesting mom. She's coming up to the beach. Awesome. How do we study sea turtles out in their natural habitat when they're on uh, when they're in the ocean as opposed to on the beach. There's a lot more challenges. You have to have a boat. You might have to have a drone. You might have to have, you have to know where they are. So you might have to tag a turtle, right? There's so many things that you have to come across um, and overcome in order to learn more about this juvenile stage. Now, once they reach adults, let's go back to our drawing for a moment. So we went from our little nest, brrr, little baby and now they're just out in the ocean oh my gosh what are we doing out here swimming 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 now eventually they are going to grow into their adult form okay and that's what we picture when we picture sea turtles now we're gonna go way back to the beginning of the class way back all right rewind you remember at the beginning we talked about how these are air breathing animals so, if you were to design the perfect sea turtle, let's watch. The perfect sea turtle, based on the name, sea turtle. Oop, tricked you there. <gasps> Big breath. The perfect sea turtle. Where would the perfect sea turtle lay their eggs? Yeah, probably in the sea, right? Now, they're not quite there yet. So our sea turtles are still air breathers and their nests are still on the beach. So once they reach that adulthood, what they're going to do is they're going to find a mate. They're going to come back to the beach, the females are, and they are going to crawl back up and start that whole cycle over again. Now, that's pretty fantastic for a life of an animal that um, traverses our oceans. Sea turtles can travel really, really far, thousands of miles, but they always return back to that first beach. Now, that's pretty fascinating if you ask me. Couple more things about our sea turtle species. They are um, incredibly strong swimmers, right? So I mentioned how they can travel really, really far. Watch how this animal here moves. Check that out. Now, this is another green sea turtle. Notice that it's not really using the back legs, the back flippers very much. Those I like to think of as rudders. But those four flippers are incredibly strong. Strong enough to um, travel miles and miles in the ocean. Strong enough to crawl them up on the beach. Now, the reason I'm talking about how strong they can swim and how far they can swim is because one way that we're able to study where sea turtles go is actually by studying a little bit more about what's growing on top of them. And this was perfect timing. Check out the algae. Ooh, in fact, actually, Cynthia, can you pause this video right now? Oh, she's going to look it up. Gotcha. You can't pause it here. Okay. Well, we're fine. Do you see these white marks on the turtle's back? 
Now, those are something called epibionts. Those are barnacles. Well, not all of them, but those are barnacles and other little critters living on the sea turtle. Now, here's the thing. We don't know a whole lot about what goes on with these sea turtles out in the ocean, but we do know that certain barnacle species and certain little animal species only live in certain regions of the ocean. So if a sea turtle comes all the way back to their home beach and we can study the animals that are living on the sea turtle, that gives us a great idea of where that sea turtle might have gone. And that's one way that scientists are learning how far sea turtles can in fact travel. For example, with that eastern Pacific leatherback population that I was talking about, they like to nest on uh, the west coast of Costa Rica. Here, I'll do it this way so you can see. West coast of Costa Rica. And then they travel way out here, like into the central Pacific area. And then they return. So overcoming some of those challenges is to learn a little bit more about the things that might go along with a sea turtle. Talking about relationships, how these turtles um, can relate with the animals who live on them. We like to think of them as little hitchhikers, right? And also learning a little bit about their nutrient needs. What kind of energy does a sea turtle need to get that far and how might they do that? So learning about what they eat, right? What do sea turtles eat? We had two minutes left and we haven't even talked about what sea turtles eat. I'm going to give you a second. What do you think a sea turtle might feed on? What have we been seeing in these videos? And take a look at its jaw, its beak. What do you think a sea turtle like that might eat? Well, sea turtles, depending on the species, they love to feed on algaes, like our green sea turtle loves to feed on seagrass. Check this out. Chomp, chomp. See how it uses the beak to break through the seagrass and pull it up from the floor? Now, leatherback sea turtles in particular love to feed on jellies. They love jellies. That's right, sea jellies. So sea turtles have a varied diet depending on what the species they are, depending on how far that species might have to travel, depending on what their nutrition and energy needs are. But all sea turtles, oh, this is our Olive Ridley sea turtle that we're watching here getting fed. Um, this sea turtle, we like to feed Theo and Lou, our two Olive Ridley sea turtles. We feed them fish um, or clams and, and squid mostly. Ah, possibly shrimp. So that was a piece of clam right there. Oh, I love that. Cynthia just shared a fun fact for our upcoming Valentine's Day holiday. Um, we like to provide some fun treats for our animals. And Theo and Lou, our Olive Ridleys, they get a heart-shaped meal for Valentine's Day made up of all of those things I was just talking about. Those. So the squid the clams, the shrimp, so all sorts of seafood nutrients. We love it. All right, my friends. So throughout this program, we've learned a lot about sea turtles, um, even if we have been talking very generally. Remember, there are seven different species, so we kind of had to uh, create ranges for some of those facts that we shared with you. But in general, sea turtles are reptiles. They're air-breathing animals that use their strong flippers and protective shell covered in scoots or scales to move their bodies through the water. Because they are air breathers, um, they do still have to come back to their beach to lay their eggs. The life cycle of a sea turtle, really, really difficult for those little hatchlings. Remember, they start out in a as eggs under sand. They have to break their way out, crawl their way down the beach, and continue to travel to get as far away from predators as possible. In fact, my friends, only about one in a thousand sea turtle hatchlings makes it to adulthood. So lots of challenges for this species. Now, once they reach adulthood, they can come back. They lay their nest on the same beach where they were hatched. They feed on all sorts of nutrients depending on the species. So sea turtles can be very interesting creatures. The learning does not stop here. I encourage you to uh, continue discovering a little bit more about sea, sea turtles, doing your own research to learn about your favorite species. Once again, leatherbacks are my favorite. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for joining us this morning with our Aquarium of the Pacific Online Academy. Once again, my name is Dana. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to text us at 562-286-1838. Otherwise, we hope to see you back for our 10 o'clock program. It's our Spanish programming, and the theme today is birds. 
So come on back at 10 o'clock for our Spanish birds program. If not, we'll see you Friday morning. And again, thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.